Hi guys, happy Saturday, and welcome to a long overdue episode of Mike's Laboratory. Hope everybody is doing okay, hope everybody's doing great, and I hope you're all having fun with your Joes. Alright, um, today's video is going to be the uh, lower muscle body repair that I promised to show you like last July, I think it was. Um, I showed you some alternate kind of hacky methods of doing it, but there is now a better way. My friend Brian Gidney came up with some 3D printed pieces, which looks like they're going to work very well. So, I have a muscle body sitting here on the bench, and I'm going to show you how this works. Okie doke, okie doke. Alright guys, without further ado, take a minute to finish up my smoke, and let's get to it. Okay, we're back. Alright, let's get this camera positioned here good. Okay. All right, as you can see, we have a disassembled muscle body here. The muscle bodies are held together by rubber that runs through and through the calf piece and winds up around the rivet in the foot. What these kits do is they replace the rubber with kind of looking like vintage type body pegs, right? Okay. What I used to do is I would use Cotswold pegs and the knee peg, which fits into the top of the calf, fits in there very loosely. So I usually had to wrap it up with some tape to make it fit good. Also, this part, the hole in the peg has to go around this peg here and the hole is too small so I would have to drill these out making the process take a little while screwing around fitting and finishing also muscle body feet come in two different sizes with the slots here this one's very loose and I would have to shim the hell out of the Cotswold peg to make it be tight in there so that you get friction so it wouldn't just flop around on the narrower ones Cotswold peg worked fairly well not great, but fairly well. You still had to shim it up a bit. But anyhow, keep that in mind when you're fixing a muscle body. Two different slot sizes for the feet. This one, this particular muscle body here is a bullet man. Um, I'm not sure if it was only bullet men that came with these narrower slots, but this particular one did. Okay, enough said about that. All right, so first of all, restringing the lower body. This is what you want to do. Take your Speedo shorts, and you're going to want the back half of the torso. A calf, this calf is a right calf, I think. Yep. And we want the inner and outer right leg. Okay. So, first thing you want to do is take a piece of elastic. And you take one of these pieces, which fit up into... The thigh part up in here and I usually did with the inner to begin with the flat part of this little ball thing goes against this peg here on the inner thigh like so get that up in front of the camera there you go okay so what you do is you take your elastic Thread it through the hole. And then at the end of the elastic, I just tie a knot. I would imagine you could probably use a crimp connector or something like that. But I found while playing around with this that just tying a big old knot here. It's the double overhand knot seems to work pretty well. Does the job. All you need it to do is not pop through there. Okay, so now we have our knot. Slide it through. And then you want to take it and set it into the inner thigh so that that flat spot is about where it should be 
Yeah, stay in there. And this means that the slot in that little ball socket thingy will be pointing towards the back of the leg. And take your other piece, mate them together. Oh, as a side note, these things come apart pretty easily. Razor blade down the seam and a little pressure and the upper thighs pop right apart. All right, now we stick this through our Speedo shorts. And then what I always do is I take some electrical tape. Ah, come on. Ah. That is if the electrical tape is going to cooperate with me today. This is just to hold things together while you're getting the tension on the elastic adjusted. Ooh, you're going to fight with me, aren't you? All right, hold on. I'll be right back. Okay. Tape loses, Mike wins. Yeah. Okay. Now, slide it back through there. You want to come around, do the same thing on the other side. But on this side, you want to hook it over the pin in the torso and get the torso stuck into the Speedo shorts, like that. Now, sometimes you'll need to grab and use a pair of pliers to do this. Let's get it out of there and hold it like that. Then take the top half of your torso and temporarily put it back together so that the elastic don't escape on you. And then you just pull on it and hold it and test the tension in the leg. Muscle body, I mean, when you go like that, you should st it should be pretty stiff. Okay. Then I take a clamp, clamp it on here so it don't get away from me, like so. And set up your other half. You want to stick that through there, grab hold of it, pull your clamp. This is the tricky part. Get your other inner leg or inner thigh up into its slot inside of there and spin this thing so that it's against, again, against that little peg right there, the flat part of this. All right. Give it a good crank and get a knot in it. Fiddly, as the toy polloi guy would say. All right, once you got a little piece of so a single square knot or a sigma overhand knot in there, then you can make sure that you have the proper amount of tension that you're after. Um, that's a matter of personal preference. I like to do them, do them up pretty tight. So anybody who I fixed a Joe for before will tell you that elastic's tight when I do them. Some guys may want to, whoops, damn it. Some guys may want to do them a little less tight. It's entirely up to you. And now so you have that tightened up and you have that not tight in there. And you want to finish up your overhand, not your finish up your uh, double overhand. Again, it's just kind of a pain in the tail, but uh, 
I would not recommend using vice grips on the elastic, which is tempting to do. I think we're going to do this a little differently, I think. Let's try this instead. How about we go like this? Okay, there we go. All right, stuff that back up through the Speedo shorts. Tuck her back down. Okay, come on. Then you can use the slot in here. over the elastic. And then pop the lower joint into place or the low <coughs> excuse me the um, half of the thigh into place. okay. Put that one on there, holding it together so it don't pop apart. Get yourself something to lift the elastic up with. Oh, come on now. I did this twice before I started filming the video. Why is this one fighting me so hard? There we go. And as you can see, now you got a nice tight body. Okay. <clears throat> now, for the installation of the other stuff. These pegs are the knee pegs. Unlike the Cots pegs that I messed with before, they fit right over. Switch go this way with it. The inner peg at the knee of the muscle body thigh. Okay. Also, being a 3D printed part, we're going to check the fit in the top of the calf too. Sometimes 3D printed parts are a little off because of flashing and stuff. But as you can see, Brian did an excellent job here. So I don't think it's going to be too bad, but it's also dirty in there. So we're going to clean that out a little bit and put a little silicon lube in there to make sure that it'll slide in okay. So a little alcohol. And we'll clean that out a bit. side too. All right. Now let's see how well it fits. It's still a little tight. All right. Let's go move on to a little silicone spray in there. It still feels a little too tight going to risk breaking anything so we're going to pull that out of there i'm going to take this over to my grinder and just take a little bit off of the sides okay now let's see there we go that's better fits right in there feels good and tight doesn't feel too tight okay so i'm going to put this on the peg Come on, get on there. Okay. 
and you want to get it so that obviously it fits all the way down into there so it's all the way on that little peg okay then fit this together like that oops got to make sure that stays inside of there too uh, and make sure that you're you can spin these things to the proper position once you get it assembled but it's a lot easier to do so before you get it assembled okay I need to go in there go under just a little bit more and what causes the tightness and it is nice and tight well, I don't know which way Brian intended for these things to be put in it just seemed to me that putting it on this way made more sense and again you may have to do a little goofing around but the idea is that the friction on this peg is what gives the body its tightness there we go that looks like it's pretty well in there all right stupid elastic get back in here oh, okay yeah there we go now the seam is pretty tight <laughs> okay and just push your I would not push too hard on here because there's no, not a lot of support for that peg in there. It doesn't slide on easy like that. And I wouldn't crank it too hard. This one may need a slight bit more trimming, but... Yeah, I think we'll just put a little, take a little more off of that. Bear with me for a minute, folks. I have to move over here. Okay, you look at all that time I wasted screwing around with that. Okay, anyhow, so now we're good to go like this. Cut a little bit more off. There we go, and that goes all the way on. Nice and tight. Okay, now for the foot. Foot's pretty simple. Just take your peg. This one here is, is, is the smaller one. And this peg here is what I'll need to put in there. However, since I'm not putting this bullet man together immediately, I'm just dem using him for demonstration. I'm not gonna grind this down yet. We'll just use the foot that has the wider pit or the wider slot. And it's just a matter of slipping it in there. And as you can see, pretty tight. And then you just grab a rivet, whatever I did with the damn rivets. Oh, look, here's a whole bag of them. This should be fairly self-evident, but let's do it anyway, just for the hell of it. Stick the rivet through the hole. And then you just plug this into It might be easier to actually put the foot in for put the foot on the peg first. But anyhow, and pretty much there you have it. It's a little bitchy at some at some parts of the job, but especially messing with the elastic. But once you do this, you'll have a nice tight muscle body with no rubber stuff that likes to deteriorate or come apart. And uh, 
All I got to say is, other than that is, uh, great job, Brian. This is an issue that has been around for a while. And in the same way that the guys who made the kits for the arms and the, and the shoulders, or the elbows and the shoulders, you've come up with a pretty practical way. Okay. You've come up with a pretty practical way to redo the lower body. So, all I would say, buddy, is... Um, I guess I would say work on the sizing of sizing a little bit more and you'll have a perfect product right now you got a pretty damn good one all right I guess that's about it for this short video today I plan on doing some other ones very shortly one more this weekend I think so anyhow without further ado let's go back to my smiling face okay guys um, I think that was pretty simple. If I found it pretty simple, I hope you did as well. A um, couple other caveats. You got to pull all this dang rubber out of the inside of the legs, obviously. And uh, also, as with any 3D printed part, as I showed, measurements can be a little off. You may have to do some trimming. But all in all, a very good, uh, good way to fix these guys. Very good job by Brian Gidney. I will put down... Is uh, how you contact him in the comments in case you're interested in order to getting one some of these kits. They are not real expensive at all. I bought a bunch of them from him. So anyhow, uh, guess that's it for now. There'll be another video coming uh, pretty soon. You guys have a great Saturday. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Have fun. And we'll see you next time on another episode of Mike's Laboratory. Let's get them all back on duty.